Hello world, what's going on beautiful people? Yes, it is I, David Javon Anderson II. It is I, I am him, and him is me. How y'all doing out here? This is the very first official episode of Front Porch Conversations. Oh, what, you didn't hear me in the back? I said Front Porch Conversations. Yes, get used to that name, get used to that name, get used to that name. But anyways, I want to introduce myself to the world, to the public. And I also want to dedicate this first episode to women and to be more specific, black women. Because I am a black man, as you can see. <laughs> Yes, I'm a black man, so I have a black mother, a black grandma, you know, black cousins, black aunties, black sisters, black nieces, you know. So I love black women, and black women is very strong, you know. Double minority, they black and they women, very strong, very supportive. But anyways, just want to introduce myself while giving a shout out to the black women out there in the world. Now, me. Little old me. Columbia, South Carolina is where I was born. June 22, 1988 is when I was born. At the one o'clock hour, <laughs> it's funny, I've been having that question all my life and couldn't get an answer because my parents don't know what time I came. But on my original birth certificate, on the time part, it's in military time, and the only thing I can see is 13. Now, if you're familiar with military time, 13, that's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I know the hour, but I don't know the minute. But I'm an afternoon baby, summer baby. That made me a counselor. Yeah, so <laughs> you know what I know. <laughs> Shout out to Mizey. Uh I got a... Uh, I got an interesting story, an interesting beginning. And with that interesting beginning, I came up with a theory. Now, when I was, uh, when my parents met, they wanted to have children. They were trying to make children for like two years. And then, boom, my mom finally got pregnant. Boom, came up with me. All right, fast forward uh, after nine months, time for me to come out to the world. I did not, I repeat, I did not want to come to this world. So, my mama had to get a C-section. I had to take a different route. Now, my theory with that is, psychologically, I never left the womb. And that's why, looking back on my life, how I was always so comfortable around women, you know, very relaxed, just feel like at home, at ease, like peace, tranquility. <laughs> Tranquility. So that, that's my theory on that. Because my mama had to get a C-section psychologically. I never left the um, I never left the womb. So that's why my love for women is so much deeper, uh, so much rooted, and I got so much passion for y'all and respect for y'all, and just amazed by y'all anatomy, like. Think about it, women, it's the only ones that got the godlike feature to bring life into this world. Like, of course we come together and make one, which is magic within itself. But the fact that they carry and bring the life into this world, that's, that's a, that's a godlike feature. You know, so they're very special, very special. So shout out to y'all. But um, back to, I guess, me, <laughs> since this is the introduction. Um, Like I said, I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. Majority of my life, I grew up off Monticello Road, 215, Monticello Road. <laughs> um, graduated from Eau Claire, went to college. Went to college in Sumter, South Carolina. Morris College, that's the name. Shout out to them, class of 2012. 
Mass Comm major. Got a bachelor's in fine arts. Mm. Now, I'm going to fast forward you to current times. Been trying to find myself, learning myself, being very self-aware. And I think looking back at my life, how I was groomed to overcome that was I was the first child. And between my parents, I was the first child. And for five years, cause my, my, I got a little brother and we five years apart. So for five years, I had my parents to myself. So with that being um, said, with that being said, I had to learn how to self-soothe. You know, I had to learn how to um, self-defend, self-entertain. You know, um, just do a lot of stuff for self. So I was, my foundation was in that. So now I was faced with this spiritual transition where I had to look in within self. It was a hard battle. I'm not gonna say it was easy because it wasn't, but. Um, like I said, I was prepared for it. So I was able to overcome it. And this is what y'all looking at now. 32 years old. It's July 2020. Don't know the Pacific date. That's why I said it like that. <laughs> um, 32 years old. And this, is, this, is what, this is what I'm starting. Front Porch Conversations. Why you call it Front Porch Conversations? Growing up in um, a neighborhood or some may say the hood. On the front porch, everybody grew up, generations grew up on the front porch. You see grandparents on the front porch, you see parents, kids. Um, when you're sitting on the front porch, you, you evaluate in your environment, you see the regulars who stay out there, you know, knowing about the cars and stuff. It's like a um, family community type situation. And also, um, real conversations happens. Um, on the front porch, funny, sad, you know, it could be deep, it could be anything, but the common denominator in all those conversations is that it's raw, like uncut, not stepped on, <laughs> you know, how many adjectives I got to come up for you to get a picture, anyways, that's, 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 that's that front porch, that's the essence, that's the essence of it, you know, you get your hair, you get your hair braided on the front porch. You, know, you see people get uh, getting haircuts on the front porch. You know, it's it's, it's real, it's real deep. It's, it's, that, that's a real valued place within a village. You know, the front porch. So that's why I decided to go with the name Front Porch Conversations, and I will stand on that because I'm from that. You know, but. Like I said, I'm going to um, dedicate, excuse me, dedicate this episode to women. Me, currently single, um, not actively, <laughs> not actively looking, but um, because I'm actively searching for myself as of right now. So I'm being selfish right now, which is a good thing, which is healthy for your mental and for your well-being. You know, setting healthy boundaries and everything. But I feel like I had to go through this transition to um, to, to prepare myself. And once I once I come out, she's going to be right there waiting on me. It ain't going to be too much longer, you know. I hope not. I'm <laughs> 32 years old, you know. I prefer a woman with no kids. Don't shoot. Don't shoot me. Don't be mad. I know it's. I, listen, I got homegirls with babies. Uh, it's. <sighs> I know it's. I know it sounds selfish, and I have to be one hundred percent honest. It's low key a selfish statement, low key. Um, but it's real. It's real, and the, the the way I look at it is because I want my first to be her first and we can share that moment together. You know, like, I don't want to be my first and just like your third child. <laughs> like, it's still going to be special because children, children are still uh, blessed regardless how they come. They blessings regardless. So, yes, I understand all that. But I just want to share it's the first moment, my first time with another first time, and that's all. 
That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. That's the reason why I prefer a woman with no kids. No other reason. So, yeah. Um, the picking's getting slim. The older you get, <laughs> more of the store. So, hopefully, she is not too far uh, away. Um, praying for you. Getting prepared for you. I hope you prepare for me. I'm a little complex. <laughs> I'm a little complex. I say I'm a cancer, but I'm born within the Gemini cancer cusp, which is the cusp of magic, by the way. So I got a little hint of Gemini and a little hint of cancer, but I feel like it's a healthy balance between the two. Trust. You enjoy the ride. You enjoy the ride. But you got to be prepared. You got you to have two two seatbelts. <laughs> you got to have two seatbelts for this ride, man. You got to have two, two seatbelts. And I'm a free person, man. Like I'm, I'm free spirit. So I know y'all probably think, what, what's, what's, what's wrong with him? Like, why he's single? He's 32 and he's single. What's his flaws? Um, I think one of my flaws is I do things that, <laughs> that make women mad. Um, it be simple stuff. Sometimes it be big stuff depending on how you look at it. But, um... I do it because if the roles was reversed, God, somebody shoot the engineer. <laughs> but we gonna keep it rolling. We gonna keep it rolling. We gonna keep it rolling. But if I like, uh, I do things that if the roles were reversed, I wouldn't be mad. So it be it be those moments, you know. Um, like, how, like, how you didn't think I wouldn't be mad? Cause I wouldn't be mad. You know, if if you would have did what I, which what, what I'm being accused of, I wouldn't trip. Like for example, I'm one of those guys that um, I don't care if my uh, if my uh, lady dance go to the, or go to a club and dance. You know, shout out on um, COVID nineteen, she can't do that for a while. But <laughs> that's a little selfish. But hey, I'm gonna pay the council. But anyways, um. If she go out to the club with her friends or whatever, or who else she got with, I don't care if she dance with other guys. And like, like I said, I'm a black man, so I don't look at twerking. I don't. I don't look. I don't look at twerking as sexual when it comes to dancing. Like twerking is really just dance, nothing more, nothing less. You know. Like I said, I'm from that, so I don't really look at it sexual unless it's a sexual situation. But. Um, so girls, girls get mad if you go out to the club and you dance with other girls. Right? True. I'll let you dance with other guys. Huh? Oh, yeah. I ain't, I ain't used to that. <laughs> Came more to do that. Yeah. You, when you got my uh, attention, you took it. <laughs> ah man. But nah. <clears throat> Back to what I was saying. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get mad. I wouldn't get mad if you dance with another, uh, another guy. Because it's just dancing. Like, don't be disrespectful. Let the man feel up, feel all up on you. But just him dancing regular how a man dance with a woman who twerk, I don't see nothing wrong with that, and I don't trip on that. So I'm one of those type guys. Like, I feel like when it comes to a relationship, you shouldn't have to feel that you're in a relationship. Like, when you with me, it's no... There's no shackles on your ankles, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not chained down to me. Like, you with me because you want to be with me. So, like, you still a free individual, but you just decided just to be with me. And that's how I look at relationships, you know? So, uh, I really don't trip on too much. I don't trip on too much. So, I tend to get in trouble for doing things that I wouldn't trip on, but if the, role, if the roles were reversed, a woman would trip on. Um... What's another flow I might have? Hmm. I don't know. Can't think of nothing right now. I'm an awesome guy. <laughs> I know that was cocky. I know uh, I know that was cocky, but it's not cocky. It's confidence. I was raised right, man. I was raised right. I was fortunate to uh, be raised with both of my parents. You know, my daddy was a good role model to how a man is supposed to love a woman. And my mama was a good role model for on, on how a woman's supposed to love a man. 
You know what I'm saying? My parents are still together to this day. So, like, that's my motto that, that I have. So, yeah, you know, one of them. <laughs> I don't know why I like saying that. But I like saying that, yo. It's cool. I got it from this guy named Mozzie. But yeah, I'm an awesome guy, man. Both of my parents had a good motto. And like, I never witnessed my um, pops call my mama out of her name. I told him like, bitch, ho, like those words. Like, never heard it. Uh, my pops ain't never put his hands on him. And I, I done witnessed a couple times that my mama put hands on my dad. And my daddy didn't hit her back. My daddy just put like in a, like in a little bear hug. Like, calm down, darling. Calm down. Calm down, babe. Calm down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, like, that's, like, like that's, 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 the, that's the most contact he did. You know, at, at the wild shit, man, them, them hits hurt. I'm, my mama is uh, a plus size woman. She's from the country, um, Wadden, South Carolina. You know, uh, grew up most of her life in Four Way, Eastway Park, you know. Um, Got a lot of siblings, majority brothers. So, yeah, she heavy-handed. Yeah, so, hey, after three good ones, you know, I mean, you got to stop. Or I might have to, hey, put you in the submission. <laughs> I, might, I might have to put you in the submission, man. Like, for real. Like, shit's hurt. <laughs> I, know, I know I'm wrong, but damn. <laughs> I'm a man at the end of the day, and I can't let you just beat me up. <laughs> I get it though. I get it though. I get it. Shit. <laughs> you don't want to wrestle? <laughs> My mom would throw hands. She don't want to wrestle. She straight, ah, straight jabs. For real. She get it from her mom. That's how that's how my grandma used to uh discipline us. She ain't really like she she used wishes every now and then, but if it's not around her, you go get punched. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up, if she ain't got nothing around the grab, you're getting punched. And it's landing. The first one always land. That's one thing about women, yo. That first hit, they they almost guaranteed that first one. Cause they so, especially if they up close. Women got a specialty with up close hits. Like if they already in arms run, on, on, God damn, in arms reach, it's a wrap. That first one gonna land. It, it's gonna hit you. You gonna get surprised. Then you gonna get woke. But she, she done hit you twice already. <laughs> like, like, she done hit you twice already, so you might be leaking. You know what I'm saying? Ugh. You got to be careful with these women, man. I done got punched in the eye before. And one thing I did, it froze me up. I looked at her, tensed up, turned around and speed walk off. That's all I did. That's all I did. That's all I could do. I almost shot a girl before. Hey, man, some of y'all girls could be too passionate, man. Some of y'all could be too passionate, for real. Like, I, I came across a crazy girl. She had a crowbar to my forehead, like one of those, like, cross uh, crowbar. Had that shit in my head. <sighs> had my nine in my pocket. Like, already in my hand, fang on the trigger. And my mind, my mind was already made up. I was like, yo, she swing. Like, she swing, that crowbar hit me. I'm shooting her in the leg, like I'm shooting through my jeans. Like I ain't even gonna pull it out, like for real. <laughs> for, hey, I'm laughing, but I'm dead ass, yo. I'm laughing, but I'm dead ass, yo. Like I'm not even taking it out my pocket. I'm shooting through my jeans, busting your ass twice in your leg, and that's it. I ain't even gonna try to kill you. I don't, cause die shot not kill. I'm not gonna kill unless I really have to. I don't have to. I, I had, had to get you off me. You had a crowbar. A crowbar, like, come on, man. Nah, nah, I can't let you do me like that. I'm sorry. Listen, I got this saying. I'm a man first, but I'm a gentleman second. And the reason why I say that is because naturally, DNA, how I'm built, I'm a man. You know, and you're going to have to respect that man regardless. So I'm a man first, principles and everything. So with that being said, um... That's just what it is. That that man come first. And, um, second, right after that, I'm a gentleman. Cause gentleman, like a man is what I am, but 
the gentleman, the second part, is how. The gentleman is how. Like, how I conduct myself, I, I conduct myself in a gentleman way. Even in hostile situations, I handle it the most gentleman way. Like, if I got to beat somebody's ass, I will properly beat your ass. <laughs> like, like, if I got to check you verbally, I will properly check you verbally, okay? Like, I, I, I have a... I have a professional, gentle, a gentleman side about how everything I do, everything, everything I do, say, the way I think, how I move, I, I try to do it the gentleman way, the proper way, all right? So I'm a man first, I'm a gentleman second. That's how that goes. Um, there was more about me. Uh, hmm, where am I going to go? You know what? I'm not going to tuck your head off. I'm going to end it because I, I, I like, I like, I'm big on energy. I'm very in tune with energy, vibes, uh, the universe, you know, the, the 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 divine, your higher self, you know. I'm I'm into all that, so I don't like to force anything at all. I don't like to force anything. If anything forces, is already uncomfortable. I don't want it. I don't want it. I I tell you no and come back around later for real. But I'm in on that note. This is Front Porch Conversations. And who that? <laughs> who that? That's David Javon Anderson II. Yeah. Big speaker. And I just want y'all to know one thing. I'm going to be a household name across multiple generations. I'm going to tell you another thing. Y'all know how people get statues made of them after they don't pass for the greatness that they did? I'm going I'm I'm to have some greatness in this world, and I'm going to get my statue before I die. Yeah. Remember that. But July 2020, I don't know the exact date, but July 2020 is probably at the noonish evening, evening, evening-ish. Probably like 4 or 5. So, David Javon Anson II said, household name across multiple generations I'm going to have a statue before I die. I'm gone. Front porch conversation. Stay tuned. Treat yourself. Entertain yourself. Give me a listen. I'll look.